Hey guys, Native America Tatanka. You're listening to We Are Wrestling Old School versus New School. Stick to what you know how to do best. That's talking to that and sign checks. Yeah. Leave the rest on the me, Daddy. Richard. Up goes Blanchard. Help. My hard-earned tax money. One, two, three. Guaranteed victory. It's always you, Brett. Austin 316 says I just whipped your ass. If you smell what the rock is cooking. I can tell you it's going to be a day that... What is up? We are wrestling maniacs out there worldwide. I'm the host with the most, the best one, Donnie, here with my co-host. The Armenian Nightmare, Chaz Smith. What is up? We are wrestling maniacs. Woo! And this week's episode of Old School vs. New School, we have a special guest here for this special love edition of Old School vs. New School. If you want to introduce yourself, Danny. What is going on, everybody? I'm one-third of We Are Wrestling, man, the We Are Wrestling podcast. This is a very weird episode to, you know, have me be a guest on. I don't understand why. You know, it's almost like I have the face of, like, a porn star or something. But welcome <laughs> to the episode, man. Shit's about to get fucking wild. <laughs> That's right. It's going to be getting very wild. And I really hope that YouTube does not demonetize us. Because in <laughs> wrestling, there has been a lot of really fucked up loved angles and stuff that we're going to be talking about all in this episode because of course it is tomorrow is valentine's day so oh. we're going to be talking about some of the best wrestling weddings we're going to be talking about some of the best wrestling love angles but before we get into that if you're not a we are wrestling maniac yet already and you're not a part of the thousands of subscribers the best way to support us is by hitting that subscribe button now turning on the post notifications videos be coming out of nowhere like an rko and of course you already know the grind is real see danny knows the intro because in case you guys don't know that we are wrestling talk show danny ben and myself we actually talk about wrestling news and stuff every saturday here on the we are wrestling channel and you guys get now old school versus new school every monday we are expanding on the podcast horizons so before we get into our love edition, Danny, what did you grow up on in, you know, the old school, new school era of wrestling? Like, how did you get into it? Because that was our first episode, Chaz and I did on this podcast. Yeah, yeah I uh, I got into pro wrestling around the Attitude Era. The first event that I ever saw was Bad, Bad Blood 97. And I just like, Ooh. you know, being, being, you know, six years old or whatever, and just seeing the visuals of Kane's debut and him ripping the cell door off. And What a great like, show tombstoning his brother and it's just like you know it's it, i didn't watch the full show until years later because when i saw kane i you know i was obviously i was like six i i almost shit my pants to be honest with you. like i was i was petrified i was petrified uh so i didn't watch the show until years later man but i've been watching pretty much ever since then i grew up you know the invasion storyline from back in 2001 and Mick Foley being the commissioner in 2000 and you know, the triangle ladder matches and, you know, Austin and Rock and Triple H and Angle and Kane, Undertaker, Jericho. I mean, Jericho's debut in, in 99. How can you forget those monumental moments? Bro, Absolutely. Jericho. Absolutely. Absolutely. I remember yeah. when they were teasing it. It was it was it was incredible. And everybody was show. every everybody was freaking out. I remember around that time. Uh, like the turn of the century or whatever, a couple months after when, you know, th we went from 99 to 2000, everybody went fucking crazy thinking the world was going to end. And they wanted to pretty much take all that hype and mix it up with Jericho's debut. It was awesome. I was in a band called Silent Cry. My band was named Silent Cry. And we had T-shirts made. Um, it was called the Cry Cry 2K tour. It was, <laughs> it was, it was like cheesy, but it was, it was still fit. But uh, And we played, we did a New Year's Eve show. And our power went out 
and we were like, oh my god, that's it, we're done. Oh, you wow. see what's very, but you see what's very interesting about this is, Chaz, you grew up in like the '80s with wrestling. Danny grew up in the '90s with yeah. wrestling, and I grew up in the 2000s with wrestling. Even though yeah. you know I've done my research and stuff. It's pretty cool. We're all in different generations. And that's the cool thing about this old school versus new school podcast is we talk about all the nostalgia. We talk mm -hmm. about some of our favorite moments. And now getting into this week's topic for we are wrestling's old school versus new school love. What's the first storyline that pops in your head when it comes to wrestling love? You're the guest, Danny. You go first, buddy. Oh man, I mean, I would have, I would have to say, you know, Triple H and Stephanie is like the big one, you know, because you know that was huge Absolutely. back in like '99, and you know, Triple H was sort of transitioning away from Degeneration X, and he's sort of, you know, being the cerebral assassin, he had Stephanie or whatever. And then one that really hits me is when Stephanie faked her pregnancy. Remember that? She I hired, remember yeah. that. She hired yeah. doctor, whatever. Triple H found out. And then shortly after that, she went with Jericho. And that, I, that was just mind-blown. Yeah, that was weird. All the time, you know, she he was calling her, you know, a uh, bottom-feeding trash bag hoe. <laughs> all, all these slurs or whatever. Filthy pirate hooker. Her, her sexuality and stuff like that, and just to see them together. I mean, those are two, like, right off the top of my head that just stick out to me. Do you know what I remember of, like, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon that, like, really pops in my head? I believe it was Armageddon 1999. That's when Triple H fought Vince McMahon, and that's when Stephanie turned on her dad and, you know, had a lot joined Triple H. I remember that. And it's crazy to see, like, the transition with, with Triple H because he was always a great mid-card wrestler, you know, mm -hmm. going back to the Hunter Hearst Helmsley character in the new generation. Sure. And then, you know, in 98, he was, you know, going against The Rock at SummerSlam in a ladder match for the IC title. And then seeing him, you know, come out to my time and, you know, going on this dominant heel run. And I oh, think yeah. a lot of that really had to do with Stephanie McMahon and that love angle, because I think it really took Triple H to that next level, that main event level. But little do we know it was, you know, real life. Uh, it was life impersonating or, or uh, you know, art impersonating life and life impersonating art, you know? Yeah. But the, the weird thing is. They didn't legitimately start dating until a couple years afterwards. It started out as just an angle, or whatever, because they didn't they didn't technically get married until I think two thousand four. But I I remember that very distinctly, like you know, Test because Stephanie was with Test, mm -hmm. and then Triple H brought her to a, a wedding chapel in Las Vegas. Remember that <laughs> yes, when she passed I out of the car? To drive through wedding chapel. <laughs> <laughs> Top I mean, ten bro. attitude era moment right there. <laughs> Absolutely. Hands I mean, down. How, how could you forget that, man? Like, that was that just was classic great. stuff. Good one, Danny. That was great. You know what pops into my mind is, I mean, obvious. This is just obvious, but it was one of the best long-term storylines in WWF, WWE history, and the whole um, Macho Man and Elizabeth wedding. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. That was More, just... Wasn't that like one of the weddings that actually went good? Where there was like no issues, or did somebody try ruining the wedding? No, Jake the Snake uh, did. Well, it was the bachelor party, but the wedding was fine. The, the wedding was okay, but the bachelor party, he he tried to screw it up with the snake. That and... was uh, that was around the time where Jake and uh, Macho Man were feuding. I remember because I remember I remember watching a video clip or whatever of Jake pulling out, you know, because he always had that bag with the snake, <laughs> you know. And uh, pulling it out, and wasn't it Macho Man that he had the snake bite? And yeah, everybody started that going fucking crazy. Snake. Usually he had the python, but this was a this was an actual like this was a, a completely different snake, and that was real. If you've listened, I'm sure you guys have heard the stories and yeah. heard uh, you know the mm -hmm. you know the podcast and whatever. But that he actually bite actually bit him. That was real, and he couldn't get the snake off of his arm. And he looked like he was in a lot of pain. pain. <laughs> I, yeah, I heard it was like an actual like venomous snake, but the, yeah, it was, it was like de-venomed, so like, yeah, it didn't have any venom. And they're left backstage, or whatever, but... and he's like, "So uh, the snake's de-venomized." He's like, uh, <laughs> "Of course it is." He goes, "Well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't." <laughs> like, so let it uh, bite you, and he's like, "What are you freaking? What the fuck is wrong with you?" <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> so, but he did, and he's like, 
So don't move. Don't take any antidotes. Don't do nothing for. You know? <laughs> but then, so he was so Jake was so pissed when he. By the time he got out to the ring, he freaking he said he turned around and paintbrushed the freaking snake. So it was, it was like, <sighs> and he. So he. That's why he was. <laughs> snake was so upset. <laughs> That's the funny thing about like old school like wrestling is like how like the ribbing. I just watched a video recently, I think on like Cultaholic about like some of like the craziest ribs that have happened in wrestling. <laughs> like I just recently like saw one. This is not love related, but like I guess Owen Hart like oh, his, the around king. the time around the time Harley Race would like invite people over to his house because oh he my loved god, yes, his cooking. He the loved chili. cooking. Right. Yep. Like he was like cooking and Owen Hart ribbed the food, put something in the food. And then I guess Owen Hart was showering like in, in like Harley Race's house was like an hour from the show. So Harley Race found out that Owen Hart ribbed him and like tried messing with his food, which he takes very big pride in. Yes. And then what happened was <laughs> Harley Race, you know, has a zapper with him. And then Owen Hart's in the shower naked and he friggin' zapped them and said, Don't mess with my food again. <laughs> you know what the weirdest thing is, or, or the creepiest thing to think about is, you know, it came from was uh that Harley Race's house was actually in Kansas City, oh, Missouri, wow. where Owen Hart actually died. We're getting uh speak of Owen Hart, we're getting close to the anniversary, aren't we? we are. Was yep. it like June, May twenty third? Uh, May, yeah. May twenty third. That's close, one man. thing I will never ever forget and that actually could lead into another um if you guys don't do an owen hart episode i'm gonna be oh, very upset no, we, oh we, we are we we're are both very passionate that. owen hart fans oh we both are <laughs> that's one i heard uh the uh, actual video video footage of the incident is like locked away in a vault oh in, like, it, it does exist yes mm -hmm. it's locked away and it's got a thing don't do not ever do not show or whatever which is the, which is definitely the right thing but back to like Elizabeth and Macho Man, I feel like it's the same situation with Triple H and Stephanie. I feel like Macho Man would have not been where he was without Elizabeth because wasn't she like the first like female of like, what do they call it? First Lady of Wrestling. Yes, the First Lady. Well, not of really. She was in the WWF, but really um, woman who was Nancy Benoit was actually a was actually a valet for Kevin Sullivan and, you know, in oh, AWA, yeah. NWA. They covered that on Dark Side yeah. of the Ring. The yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people, a lot of people forget that Benoit's wife, you know, she had, she had a pretty prominent, you know, wrestling career, you know, yeah. before they got married. And I think after, after her and Benoit got married, he, uh, she promised him that she would get out of the business. So. Yeah. Yeah. Because one thing too, like speaking of Elizabeth and Macho Man, wasn't Elizabeth, the middle of the mega powers storyline there going oh, absolutely. into that mania. Absolutely. That Honestly, the... right now, Chaz is like, I think the perfect time to actually talk about the mega powers a little bit, because that was technically like a love triangle right there. It was. They betrayed it as it was. And, and the, the, the messed up thing, if you watch dark side of the ring is it actually, it actually became sort of real, which was creepy. Um, I mean, not, creepy but it was just kind of you know weird but um but the mega powers the way they built it was just amazing i mean you got to hand that to bruce pritchard pat patterson and vince for coming up with that i mean they built it over a year from wrestlemania to wrestlemania from four to five and and it was just or three to four four to five whatever and it was just awesome and they kept showing like when hogan had put her on macho's shoulder after he won the belt in wrestlemania four he put his hand on elizabeth you know to just to steady her and he would be like you could see your hands a little too close to your uh, her elizabeth's ass or whatever and and it was like it was just so freaking i mean they built that so good and then the saturday night's main event when they were um you know when the mega powers you know yes i do remember that yeah broke up you know when they were fighting uh akeem and uh big boss man and, uh, you know, Hulk Hogan cared more about bringing Elizabeth back to get help after, you know, she took that bump. And uh, it was just 
they built that storyline so freaking good. Credit to Elizabeth. I mean, she was so, you know, frail. So, so innocent. So she did a great job. <laughs> she did a really great job. And that's the thing, like, about, like, the Mega Power storyline that's so interesting. Everyone knew Macho Man was such a good face. Such a good, good guy. But he absolutely killed it as a heel during oh, yeah. this time. I because feel like I remember Hogan watching and old WWE network documentaries on that, which is why I'm very like educated with a lot of the old school, new school stuff because WWE, they do an amazing job with their documentaries. Yes. Yeah. I feel like Hogan and Macho Man have like the same kind of like baby face mentality or whatever. And it's like, you know, there was nothing bigger than Hogan and Macho Man back in like the eighties and early nineties. Like, Hogan had his vitamins. Macho Man had his Slim Jim. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I mean, bro, you still see those commercials nowadays, man. Absolutely. Not not as often, but I mean, hell, they made me want to eat Slim Jims, man. I bought yeah. some last night. They're fucking delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like Slim Jims. Was... <laughs> oh, no, it's it's true. That was uh, so good. Actually, look at what I got right here. Oh, this man's doing show and tell. Oh, man. Macho man. Back. Ringside collectibles. Actually got that for Christmas a few months back. They did such a good job too on that. I do gotta yeah, say that is that is beautiful. But, but bro, now, they, like they made they made cereal boxes, they made you know video yeah. games, they made you know these these big ass heads or whatever. Like I was watching the uh, the major the uh, major brothers podcast, the wrestling figure podcast. Oh, the major wrestling and, figure yep. podcast. And Matt Cardona had this have have these things or whatever. They're really rare. They came out in like the nineties or whatever. But they have like a it's like a bat, but they're like the wrestlers' heads or whatever, and like they're made so you could like hit your friends with them. And I think <laughs> there's a Macho Man, there's a Hogan one, and there's a Vader one. And bro, like they made le legitimately everything. Like McMahon was like, "I don't care what it is, you're gonna make money." <laughs> so they just yeah. everything was pro wrestling. Yeah, the wrestling they, buddies. They did su he did such an incredible job marketing around. Seth the time. Rollins had a wrestling buddy, a uh, uh, Macho Man. He you see yeah. it a lot in documentaries. I did too. I had a WCW one of Macho Man. I used to wrestle with him all the time on my trampoline. <laughs> Those things are rare, bro. Could you imagine? Yeah, we even, you we even have million. That's... We even have Series One Million Dollar Man right behind Chaz. Yep. Right there. Um, best but like, if you set. if you have like if you had like a Macho Man or a Hogan, like like you know, in pristine condition, do you realize oh. how much you could probably have, get? Absolutely. Cha ching. So when it comes to love stories. The one that really stands out to me, like when I first think about it, has got to be the love triangle, the real life love triangle in Ruthless Aggression with Matt Hardy, Lita, and Edge. Ooh. Oh my God, bro. That was such a Woo. fucked up story. Ooh. And it was ba it was based on real life. Matt, Matt was, was out with a torn quad. He was out for a couple of months or whatever. And Lita was still on the road. And obviously she was on the raw brand with Edge. Mm -hmm. And they started hanging out a lot, you know. And, and they actually first like started to get to know each other, actually, from... I believe they both had neck injuries in, like, mm -hmm. 2003. And that's, like, yep. when they started to, like, get to know each other. And then yeah. when they went on the road together while Matt was hurt... That's like when everything just went downhill from there. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And then didn't Matt Hardy actually lose his job for like going off on Lita on like WWE.com on like one of their shows? He was on a, uh, you can actually probably, I don't know if you can, I don't know if it'll copyright the video or whatever, but yeah, it, there's a little snippet called WWE bite this from 05. It's on YouTube. Like I, this, I, yeah, I, I remember. I, wa I, wa I watched, I watched it a couple times. But it's Lita having a sit down interview with I think Kevin Kelly and Matt Hardy calls in and is like, you know, why'd you do this, Lita? Why? You know, tell everybody why. And then he like he starts going off on edge. Very wild stuff. If you can manage to get bypass the copyright thing, you should definitely throw a little snippet in the video. Oh, I will. But yeah, I've th I've that seen was, that. That was a huge turning point, I feel like, for all three of them. But the biggest yeah. thing I do got to say about this sh triangle, I really have to like take my hat off to all three of them. Yeah. Lita, Edge, and Matt Hardy. Even though what Edge and Lita did, especially Lita at the time, was messed up, the fact that they all did what was best for the business and make an angle out of this and something yeah. that we look back at still to this day, 
as one of the best, you know, love tr- storylines out there. Got to give all of them credit for probably during a tough time in all of their lives to actually, you know, go out on live television and do this. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. Because I'm at like all the slander Lita was getting from the crowd. Like, I remember I remember the weeks leading up to Matt Hardy getting suspended. It's like every week, you know, he would he got suspended and then every week he would get, you know, show up on 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 Raw, you know, and it got to the point like where, you know, Matt legitimately was, you know, calling Lita Amy and Edge Adam, which obviously is, those are their rare names. Mm-hmm. And like that's how you knew it was serious. But the, yeah, you know, going behind the curtain a little bit, Matt Hardy said that around this time that him and him and Amy were working things out and they were actually hanging out more than Amy and Edge were hanging out at the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So uh, the fact that they turned this into a storyline and then it went it culminated to a cage match at Unforgiven. Oh my Matt, God! Matt Such Hardy, an underrated cage match. Matt right Hardy there. doing Ooh. the leg drop, bro. Matt Hardy doing the leg drop. I gotta say, like they, even though like it was a real life situation, they had some of the best matches in their career against each yeah. other during this time. And the Remember fact that like, like, they um, were able to be safe with each other as well, even though they hated each other at the time, you know they didn't want to. Like, <laughs> remember when? Uh, I forgot. I said I want to say it was SummerSlam 05. Edge and Matt Hardy, man. Edge beat Matt Hardy so bad, and he was bleeding so bad that he that the referee had to stop the match. They wouldn't allow them mm-hmm. con- to continue. Like I distinctly remember that. Like Matt, he, like his entire face was just gushing blood. It looked like you know a murder scene. Like, I remember we that. But he was, it was like a movie. crimson mask. Like he was. It was. Bad. Yeah. The referee, the referee threw the X up and was like, I- "I'm calling him, man. I can't let this continue." Mm-hmm. And when that happened, bro, everybody was like, "This shit, this shit is serious right now." Like, and that's what's thing, gonna happen? And that's the thing about like Edge. Lita really helped him take that next step in his career as a main eventer into the yep. rated R superstar. And Matt got days. such Matt got such a huge pop when he came back, man. When Matt oh, when uh, when Vince was like. Matt Hardy, you know, and he comes out of the limo and just starts walking to the ring. You're like, that was in that was actually in Connecticut, I believe, because Ben said he was actually at that event. But Matt got such a huge pop because everybody was room for him at the time. He was like one of the biggest baby faces in the company just because it was Mm -hmm. based off a real life situation between, you know, the three of them. And I remember uh, Edge saying that he was legitimately him and Lita were legitimately getting death threats. Like they would have mail sent to Stanford and they were, they legitimately like people wanted them dead. Like it got, Mm -hmm. it got so bad to the point to where they had to stop receiving fan mail. Like it just went absolutely insane. It's crazy how, you know, back in the day, like there was death threats. There there was no journalist like there is today. Kayfabe was still, you know, and that's in the 2000s and that's in the 80s. (laughs) <laughs> like if you if you have a wrestler like obviously you know Edge Lita Matt like you know these guys like obviously Matt Hardy that's his legitimate name but when you know somebody goes on national TV and calls you up by your real name yeah you know like you at back then in 05, 04, like you, that's serious like that just does not happen because it yeah. hasn't happened at that point it's not like triple like somebody had a problem with Triple H and they were like Paul get your ass out like it didn't happen. You know, I don't we didn't know Triple H's real name. I don't think until like the Internet, like, you know, probably like 07 is when that first time I this ruined knew. wrestling. It did. But I mean, back then, bro, like every, like people legitimately like thought this was real life stuff. Even this <laughs> one two hundred and twenty, baby. I do got something funny speaking of Lita that I do want to talk about real quick before, you know, we get into some of the best like wrestling weddings and stuff. One of the funniest things was Lita and Kane. I was I knew you were gonna say it. That's what I was. Thinking. What about uh? What thing a... that made, wait, but the one thing that made it so funny thinking... was Gene Sinisky taking the fake baby and punt kicking it. Remember that? <laughs> it wasn't so my wrong. fault. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. That's one guy. I hope that comes back to the company in some kind of instance. Like that dude. Have you seen pictures of him lately? He, he looks like a, he looks Braun like Roman. a. Yeah, he looks like a fucking Viking, bro. He's got he's a, a long beast, ass beard. Bro. Yeah. Like he's like he looks like 
he has <laughs> veins on top of veins. Yeah, I, his, I could, la- his last opportunity was actually with Impact back in like could 2016. You, could you see? Could you see Snitsky coming in and teaming up with Braun Strowman? That, well, would, that would be a good tag team. That would be insane. Braun Strowman needs to be in a tag team. Honestly. Strowski. It'd be like <laughs> Strowski. We are wrestling podcast. That was absolutely executed perfectly, and in wrestling, timing is everything. You know, let's flip this around and turn on everybody's heads. I think that's a very rare possibility. If I ever go to a Comic-Con and Batista's there, that's going to be what I waste my question on. Is like, what was running through your head when that kid jumped in front of you and was just doing your fucking motion? Do that? That's his buddy. This right here. Exactly, you know, bro. So what the fuck the is the issue? Like that and that was back in the day, you know, when they would show the surgeries like on video during like those Not vignettes. Like, that the dude is a fucking star. And I didn't see a 3D <laughs> or I didn't see anything from them both. I would have been extremely fucking pissed. I know that <laughs> you, Do you want this dude to snap his back? Like, do you, literally Vince McMahon is probably the most iconic villain in like just the world at this point. Like <laughs> you can open a fucking history book and Vince's name is somewhere in there about all the bad shit he's possibly fucking done. AEW and WWE cannot come up with anything creative for this guy. I do not think they need to focus on casual things. They need to focus on hardcore fans. Hardcore fans are the ones that are going to bring the ring. Featuring your host, Ben, Danny, and Donnie. We, we are wrestling. New episodes of the We Are Wrestling talk show air every Saturday. Only on We Are Wrestling. (laughs) All right. So now getting into wrestling weddings because everybody always remembers a good wrestling wedding. And there's been a lot of good and there's been a lot of bad. What's a wrestling wedding that really stands out to you? There's so many of them throughout the years that have really elevated the storylines and talent through the years. Uh, Like I said, I would have to I would have to go back to, you know, 99. You had, you know, the Tess and Stephanie wedding. But in reality, the tables got turned and it was Triple H at a at a wedding chapel in Las Vegas. I mean, that is like, yeah, when we're talking mm-hmm. like when we're talking like early 2000s, 90s, you know, like that is one of the most famous ones. Like you don't see an, an, a compilation of weddings without having that on there. You know what I mean? That I got I got a good one. one. I got a good one. It's in Ruthless Aggression. It's got to be one of the most iconic weddings of all time. One of the greatest underrated tag teams of all time. Billy and Chuck, their wedding, that oh was God. amazing. And then that's when Eric Bischoff actually, you know, revealed himself as like the pastor. And then he was like <laughs> three minutes. And that's when Danny's favorite tag team in the entire world, three minute warning, you know, came and beat the crap out of them. They weren't my favorite tag team. I do think they were very you talented. Loved three minute they warning, did, Danny. They did. <laughs> as much as I love uh, Sam Punk. <laughs> no, but I I think I think three minute warning were very underrated. Like they came in, fucking destroyed everybody, and then fucking left. I mean, what's there not to like about that? Yeah, that is kind of true. Well, afterwards, you know, we got Rosie, and then eventually we got Umaga out of it. What about Edge and Vicky Guerrero, bro? Oh, oh when Edge cheated on her with uh, Alicia Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Out of everybody, Alicia Fox. That's the funny. Alicia Fox was like their <laughs> wedding planner or whatever, and there was like a like a it kind of looked like a secure like the the uh from the security camera of like mm-hmm. this hotel room or whatever. And Edge is like trying to mac on Alicia Fox or whatever, and um, Vicky Guerrero just starts screaming and just starts getting angry, and <laughs> that's when she put leaves. and then that's when she put Edge in like a match against like the Undertaker, I think, in like Hell in the Cell at SummerSlam. <laughs> <laughs> when all that, that was, happened that was great <laughs> stuff man that was great and i gotta say like vicky guerrero and edge that was actually a pretty entertaining like love story there because edge basically used her for her power to like get himself in a better position on smackdown and there was nothing to like hate about that obviously at the time when i was a kid i hated edge but the fact that edge always tried to weasel his way around like looking back now like Honestly, such a great heel. Just How could you hate Edge, impression. man? As a kid? Because friggin' kayfabe. That's why. Friggin', I didn't know friggin' wrestling when I was a kid was fake. 
Speaking of Owen Hart, last last people, last guys to uh, wrestle Owen Hart was uh, it was Owen Hart and Jeff Jarrett against Edge and Christian night before he died. Wasn't he supposed to face um, Godfather? Yeah, he was supposed to face Godfather the the night that he passed away and win yep. the Intercontinental Title too. <clears throat> he asked. He asked. Um, he asked uh, Vince Russo if he's if his entrance could be switched because the way he was coming down, he said it wouldn't make sense if the Godfather was already in the ring. And if I came down, he said, can I, my entrance be switched? You know? And he said, he's, he's like, yeah, no problem. So imagine if it was, you know, the other way around, I mean, he could have hit the Godfather. I mean, it could have been a whole different story, you know, but mm -hmm. anyways, but I gotta say like another I'm wedding. <laughs> so like another wedding, that like also really stands out to me in wrestling has got to be back in like 2012. I think this was during raw 1000. It was AJ Lee and Daniel Bryan. And I remember this is like, around oh, yeah. the time Daniel Bryan started to, you know, transition they had a, a little bit. They had a love triangle a comedy between. thing. Yep. And I'm like, love triangle. I love, I love Daniel Bryan at the time, you know, doing the yes thing. And then eventually after the whole wedding thing, he starts to, you know, rebel against the crowd and starts going, no, yep. <laughs> the yep. crowd goes, yes. <laughs> and then we got Team yeah. hell no out of it. Awesome. Yeah, that was, uh, that was the, the love triangle, AJ Lee and CM Punk and Daniel Bryan, who she went on to actually marry. So, which, yeah. is, <laughs> which is, you know, ironic. That, that was interesting stuff, man. I don't remember. I wasn't watching WWE on a regular basis back then, so I like I'm, I vaguely remember that. So I don't have mm -hmm. much input to add, but I do remember the love triangle and you know like AJ Lee, Daniel Bryan, or Punk, or whoever would be in. I remember one time they were in the ring cutting a promo. I can't remember if it was Punk or uh, Bryan at the time. AJ Lee comes out. You know, kisses him, and then so and then one of the other ones comes out, and she goes up on the ramp and kisses him, and it just left everybody like, "What the fuck just happened, bro?" This AJ like a, Lee was so. This is like her a, time. We, this was like a weird ass three way that nobody wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and then I remember one. I remember one Monday Night Raw. Kane is just chilling in the ring, and then she jumps right on Kane, <laughs> wraps her legs around him, and then starts making out with him. And Kane is showing no affection whatsoever. <laughs> He's just sitting there taking it. Like, <laughs> it's and then I remember, and then I remember John Cena. AJ, you know, tried you know doing things with John Cena, and then afterwards, mm -hmm. I remember friggin' her screwing John Cena and helping Dolph Ziggler win. Like she always it's, had herself in those angles, which was cool. AJ, uh, AJ has definitely been around. Um, oh, yeah. one, one that we really haven't talked about. I, I don't necessarily know if you want to consider it a, a love angle or not. It definitely wasn't a wedding. It never got that far. But Batista and Melina. Ooh, wasn't that a Ooh. lot of? Wasn't that like behind the scene drama? It was. It, it was behind the scenes drama. But when she was with Eminem, I remember Eminem was supposed to face. I want to say it was Batista and Rey Mysterio, but it could have been Batista and somebody else. But I remember this one. It's a very famous clip from SmackDown. Um, Melina goes in the in the locker room or whatever and offers, you know, offers herself up in exchange for Batista to back out of the match or whatever. To protect that was the, that was for the tag team titles on SmackDown in Springfield. That was the show I was at. Where I got burnt by Boogeyman, and they were right. egg belts. There's just something about that. Like I don't know how much of it actually like translated on TV or not. I don't know if it was just like a backstage thing to work. It was a big happened. backstage thing. Just like back in the day, wasn't Sonny and Shawn Michaels? Wasn't that a big scandal? I, you know, I was gonna say that one after. Shawn, I was gonna talk well, about Shawn Michaels. Uh, brought it up so you could bring, you could talk about Shawn, it Shawn yep. Michaels' wife was a Nitro girl. I know that. I can't remember her name, but she was a Nitro girl for a long time. So what happened exactly, Chaz, with like the Sonny and Shawn Michaels thing? Because that was around like the new generation era, right? Yeah, well, um, it had to have been like ninety seven, ninety six. Yeah, it was ninety seven. It was it was the it was the run of DX time. And, and I know uh, she was with Chris Candido around the time, right? Yeah, it was Chris. Yeah, it was definitely. Um, and uh, but she was. I mean, she was she was with everybody else. I mean, she was she was a definitely got around. Um, huh. Look where <laughs> look where she's at now. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. Not trying to start no rumors. You ain't heard that from me, you know. And and that was the another thing with the you know whole breaking down the fourth wall thing. Um, you know when uh, Bret Hart came out and or uh, 
Oh no, Shawn Michaels was it Shawn Michaels and said, uh, you've had some sunny days or whatever. Some sunny days, my friend. Or whatever. Oh, that was like Bret Hart, I think. Was that? that Sean? Yeah, I remember Brett, Brett was trying Sean. to piss Sean off, and Sean would always try to piss Brett off. I think Brett and Sean were feuding at that time. But was yeah, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Was it ninety seven or ninety eight to where Shawn Michaels was commissioner of Raw? Because I remember he was the commissioner, commissioner for a while. That was like ninety eight, ninety nine when he yeah, was ninety eight, ninety nine. Because it was after right. it was after DX. But I know he was always inconsistent with that. Because I remember they were always like, demons. I remember, I remember they were always fucking with Sergeant Slaughter because he was the GM back then, mm -hmm. and you know they would come out in G strings, sure. and you know they had that little press conference or whatever, saying like, you know, we will not say that, you know, for <laughs> on Monday, yeah. like, you know, that was well, the oral, uh, the, the the biggest thing at the oral uh, in the White House now in the oral office is swallow the leader. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Actually, the DX I I talked about this in the first episode. Um, we went to the uh, I went to the DX in your house pay per view here in Springfield. Yeah, it was on December seventh, ninety seven. That was a good and, show. Um, I remember. I remember watching it a couple of years ago. I can't remember what was on, on the card, but I remember I was like, oh, "This is in Springfield, man. Let me check this shit out." And it was yeah, actually a pretty good it show. Was DX, I remember. It was in your house, sixteen. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter against Triple H. It was Shawn Michaels and uh, Shawn Michaels and um, and Shamrock, right? Shamrock, you know, and um, and that was the night that Owen Hart again. Owen Hart uh, became the Blackheart. Because he came in at the end and jumped Shawn Michaels. But anyways, what, what was funny is the night, the weeks leading up to that, they were screwing with Slaughter, and uh, you know because of he kept spitting, and they were they were like, wait, 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 and they would get the helmets, and they would have the little, they would have the little like windshield <laughs> thing and the little <laughs> the windshield wipers, and <laughs> oh, that is some great oh, stuff. It was. Uh, DX, say what you want, but DX, DX were, were the best. I mean, D they, they had some funny. But you see, DX fits shit. this episode because DX loved the authorities. <laughs> that and, you know, obviously Triple H is a huge part of this episode or whatever because nobody had a bigger love love angle than he did with Stephanie. You know, I mean, that was like the biggest thing in the business back then. Oh, absolutely. The boss's daughter China, dating dude, this guy. DX, like early, early DX days, too. He was with yeah. China. He actually cheated on China with Stephanie, and yeah. China and Stephanie hated each other for a long yeah. time. Well, do you know that? You, well, I mean, I'm sure you guys know the rumor that Macho Man had a thing with Stephanie when she was young. I I heard that. I, I don't. Hear I, I it doesn't seem I, I like don't. anybody knows if it's true or not. Obviously, Macho yeah. Man passed away. There, a it hasn't been stuff. proved, and I don't believe it personally. Per, that's me. Because my at the time there's at the with the with the timeline and whatever, if it was true, you know, Vince, I mean, there was no way that Macho Man would have been doing the things he was doing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No. Because Vince had some pull that and he wouldn't have been no. Vince wouldn't have allowed that. Like if you really look back at some of the stories that were told, even with Triple H and Stephanie at first. There was, you know, oh, a time where a Vince line. McMahon was real. Vince McMahon was not allowing any wrestler you, I mean, to date his daughter. No, but you have to also remember back then, like you know, things that have just recently came out about, you know, the the whole limo incident from the eighties, and like Vince McMahon was a fucking wild man back in those days. You know what I oh, mean? Oh yeah. So yeah, I mean, but the, any, yeah, but the stories did come out. How many of wrestlers about? A lot, you know, multiple wrestlers have came out and, you know, said this story about Triple H and Stephanie, how Triple H, you know, couldn't be with Stephanie at first because Vince didn't want his daughter, you know, dating anybody that was a worker in WWE. Yeah. I think, um, I think he, uh, no, because Stephanie was dating Tess at the time, so that wouldn't have been true. I remember when Triple H, a couple months after he first came into WWE, like Vince liked him so much that he allowed him to come and sit in the production offices. And he did that for years. And that's, you know, obviously why he has an executive position within the company all these years later. Uh, but I know from the get go, Vince always, lo always loved Triple H because of his work, yeah. work ethic, because of the kind of person he is or whatever. So I, I don't buy that for a second. But when it comes no. to this whole Stephanie and Macho Man thing, like unless Stephanie comes out, which I, she, she's more likely not, you know, Macho Man's passed away, sadly. Like, we're never going to get a definitive answer. So I don't even think it should be in any kind of discussion. You know I, I, mean? I don't 
I don't buy it personally, but that's just me. And that's, I mean, that's just a whole nother. And we, know. we don't have the facts though. That's the thing at the yeah, end. Yeah. No, day. I'm just, I'm just saying me personally. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, that's, yeah, yeah no, I, I I'm just that. stating my opinion. I mean, that's. Mm -hmm. Nickelodeon Guts number five. Wow! But yeah, I gotta say, like, with, you know, the love angles, one of them I feel like that we haven't talked about, that we definitely should, has got to be sexual chocolate, Mark Henry and Mae Young. No. They I had some of the hand. best segments. <sighs> some of the greatest segments from the Attitude Era were from Mark Henry and Mae Young. I remember this one segment, man. It was, uh, I, I believe it was on Monday Night Raw. I'm baby. <laughs> I remember it was on Monday Night Raw, whatever, and they were doing, uh, they had a bunch of those, like, hotel, hotel room segments, and, uh, and Mark Henry would be laying in laying in the hotel bed, and May Young would come in and fucking lingerie, bro. <laughs> Just the grossest fucking thing on the planet. Well, Mark Henry tried to date China, and China had no interest in him. She was after oh. Eddie Guerrero. Remember so May Young, the Royal Rumble two thousand, bro. They had that fucking bikini contest, <laughs> the transvestite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then they have like the bikini contest or something, and then oh. they young fully shut. Yeah. <laughs> and she had like the sandbags come up. <laughs> New York City was never New York they City was so never the same. So oh my God. Even the even the contestants, all the girls in the ring were like <laughs> <laughs> May Young was so entertaining. She and then uh, Jerry, the, Jerry, Jerry Lawler was officiating Puppies. it, and she was trying to grind up on Jerry Lawler, and he was trying to get out of the ring. <laughs> no, every time he was so happy to see like the divas, and then anytime May Young would come up, Jerry Lawler would be like, "No, go away, go back yeah. to your retirement home." I want to yeah. show everybody my puppies. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace, man. Her and Fabulous Mula were great. Oh, absolutely. So iconic. Like, they had both had amazing, you know, wrestling careers, <laughs> you know, really elevating, you know, women's wrestling. Bro, May Young and was then, fucking 80 something years old, and, and she then, got like, fucking put through entertaining... tables, bro. Dude, oh my yeah, God, when Bubba fucking power bombed her through Abs the fucking table. Absolutely. That was awesome. Absolutely. May Young. And then, and then her freaking head was bobbling around after <laughs> and Bubba just had like the freaking the he just looked so serious he was like this Bubba was like <laughs> yeah, for like did. five minutes at the camp what about um what she about actually, this, um, not to interrupt you I'm sorry but she actually said if she she that was her idea and she said yeah. I'm gonna take that bump she said she was gonna take that full like and then she told bubba nah, she, she told said, bubba dudley not nah, she told bubba dudley not to be a pussy and it really put yeah it down there. yes yes <laughs> yes you've heard that yes absolutely <laughs> um one one love triangle it's uh, i guess you can call it a love triangle was remember when scott steiner and tess were tag teaming and oh, they had the whole stacy keebler oh. and you know tess was Ooh. being very like you know one of those abusive assholes or whatever and you know, they, they ended up having a match, and the winner of the match ended up getting the services for Stacey Keebler. I you remember know. that. That and was, like, Unforgiven 2003. Yeah, man. One of my I'm first, not... like, pay-per-views I remember watching. Is I used to watch. I used to I I have been known to go back and revisit a lot of those Raws because I, I've told you this before. I love the dynamic of Steve Austin and Eric Bischoff being co-GMs together. It, it was just Oh, fabulous. they were in love. It was fabulous. <laughs> Remember when they had the beer drinking contest and fucking like the entire next night on Monday Night Raw, Eric Bischoff was just throwing up and he has a migraine and Steve Austin does everything <laughs> to piss him off and make loud noises. It was just hilarious. That's true love right there. Oh, true yeah. Love. But I mean, bro, like nobody had more heat around that time than Tess because like, you know, the whole, you know, Tess was him, so good. Him making it seem like he was being very abusive to Stacy or whatever and like everybody with a clear conscience is like, yo, I want to fuck this guy up. Like, you know, you just don't treat a woman like that. 
And Scott mm-hmm. Steiner, you know, finally saw that and was like, I'm going to take you away from this asshole. And then I remember the time where where Tess is like lecturing Stacy in the middle of the ring and Steve Austin comes out, gives mm-hmm. Tess the biggest stunner I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I remember too, speaking of like jealousy relationships, because there's a lot of those, you know, throughout the years. I remember in 98, uh, Mark Miro and in, in, um, Sable. Oh, yeah. Whenever she would want to expose herself, he'd be like, no. Yep. With the, when she had the paint on her freaking uh, puppies there. Yep. Bro, Mark Miro was the biggest asshole back then. And Dude, obviously, Mar- like, Mark Miro, you know, like, I loved, like, I loved the MMA gimmick he did in like 98. I, I loved when he got knocked really out elevated by Butter stable Bean too. The, isn't that dude like interview. a uh, isn't that dude like a like a motivational speaker nowadays or something like he that? He is drug free, alcohol free. He's a motivated speaker. He's doing really good for himself. Yeah, yeah. Because I've seen a lot of I've seen uh this one video on social media about him like he, he was at like a uh, middle school or whatever and he was talking about how you know his mom was you know sick and passing away or whatever and he was on the road doing his thing. And, DDP's you know, video that went viral that he made yeah. for him. I remember that talking Great about man. like his, you know, life on the road and like how his mom passing away him. and he was at a hotel room and he just like ran out, ran out of the hotel room and just started screaming because his mom passed away and he wasn't able to be there. It's That's great to see though terrible. him battle. Um, it's great to see him, you know, conquer those demons though. That's the thing about being a pro wrestler, bro. Talented. Like people like, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to steer this in a different direction, but people don't under honestly un- realize like what these dudes uh, and what these women go through. You know, I mean, they, they they're human just like everybody else. They have personal issues. They have issues with their families and stuff. But like they're on the road 300 plus days a year, you know, missing birthdays, missing anniversaries, missing their, you know, parents, you know. I mean, I remember uh, there's a lot, a lot of guys that miss, you know, funerals because they're on the road. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. People don't people who are just casual fans don't realize <laughs> the Absolutely. mental good point, the mentality it, it takes to do the kind of job that they do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Like you couldn't have said it like any better. Absolutely. That's a great point. Any other storylines, love angles that you guys want to talk about before we get into our main event, you know, question for this episode. How about the, uh, I mean, it wasn't a storyline, but how about just the whole, um, speaking of Macho Man and Elizabeth going with the whole Lex Luger thing. Oh, I remember that. WCW, right? El- Elizabeth was, wasn't Miss, wasn't Elizabeth living with Lex Luger when she, she passed away of a drug overdose? Yeah. They were like, they were legitimately dating. This was back in like yeah. 2003. They were actually dating. And, um, everybody he assumed said, that he was involved or whatever, but he wasn't at the, he wasn't at the, the house when, oh, no, no they were away. together that night. No, they were together. They were, they were. She said he was making, she was making food, and they were watching a movie, and she was at the mic and doing something in the microwave, and he noticed she was gone for, gone for uh, like too long or something, and he went to go. He was like Liz, Liz, and he went to go check, and she was just gone. I did hear that story. They were, they were popping pills like Skittles, though. Like they both were. I mean, hey, and it wasn't thank, like thank he was he was forcing her. I mean, she was right there with you know. Mm-hmm. It was same thing in the eighties with the cocaine. I mean, it, what WrestleMania three? It was like um, because they didn't have doctors, uh, <clears throat> because they didn't have um, no health insurance. I mean, McMahon had this doctor that would have this bag he would carry around, and he would have all these painkillers and you know, and he would keep the wrestlers happy. You know whatever they needed you know just to keep them on the road for 300 plus days mm-hmm. because their schedule was so tough and he knew you know that's why you see so many of these old school wrestlers dying of overdoses and you know yeah hey, i heard uh the rings were a lot like harder back then oh like, the wwf know. rings are are hard as frick anyway and and they were a lot harder back back then the, like wcw rings were more like you know bumping what they call southern bumping rings you know and uh mm-hmm. but yeah they were they were stiff as hell a series i recommend any we are wrestling old school versus new school maniac to watch if you really want to get into the dark stuff in professional wrestling is a show on vice tv dark side of the ring oh Chaz, i just watched uh, i just watched the uh great um, show the plane ride from hell. I just watched that episode the other night, man. That like 
everything that happened to that stewardess and, you know, like Scott Hall, like, you know, trying to rip her clothes off and, yeah. you know, Ric Flair, you know, being butt ass naked and just doing all kinds of stuff. <laughs> it was nuts, bro. I mean, it's definitely a Flair thing to do, but I mean, you don't just do, you don't do that to a woman when she says to stop. I mean, no, like, you just don't no. do stuff like that. No, you do not. No, um, I just watched the Owen Hart one, actually. Um, See, I want to watch that, but when ago. it comes to, like, real-life tragedies and stuff like that, like, I just can't... It'll get me in this depressed mood, and it's just like, you know, it'll, like, all my motivation will be lost, because I'll just be thinking about it. Like, the Ben Wall situation, the Eddie Guerrero situation, the Owen Hart situation. Like, when it comes to, like, real-life tragedies like that, like, I just, I can't do it. It just no. put me in a really depressive no, that's mood. Totally understandable. You know what's, you know what's weird? I and I was actually preparing um for the show. I was actually, uh, you know, different stuff was coming up. Um, and I was somehow got to this thing about Sting. Uh, you know, talking about how he almost died the first night, the very first night on Nitro when he, very first night he propelled. He was in Chicago. He was up 140 feet. Owen was only 90 feet. He was up 100 and only 90. I mean, it's crazy, but 140 mm -hmm. feet. And when he stepped over the edge, when he went over, you know, when he stepped on off the ledge thing, the riggers caught him and they noticed that his um, thing was on backwards. And they said if he, he, he said if he didn't catch that, that same thing would have happened. He would have he would have been killed. Wow. And he tried it four times and he went to Bischoff and said, this ain't working because he was so scared shitless. Like, yeah. cause it was so high mm -hmm. and the way I he don't... was propelling down, they told him you had to go down fast. You had to go down smooth and fast. He said he kept twisting and they're like, if you don't do it at a certain pace or a certain like smoothness or speed, you're not going to be able to do it. And he said he had one more shot to do it, and that was the live TV. And he said if he doesn't, if he wasn't able to do it, that would have been the end of the character. Mm -hmm. And he did it. And it was right. I watched it. Just I just watched it today again, and it was. I just got you chilled. see like there's a difference between entertaining and then putting your life at risk. You know what I mean? Like I don't hundred percent agree. I don't think I don't think any performer should have you know done anything like that. Like obviously you know the most famous one is obviously Shawn Michaels coming down. I believe he was going to be facing. Does Vince Hardy actually practice that? But, well, if they had this, if they had the locked carabiner on Owen, Owen did it on he did it on Sunday Night Heat. If they had the locked carabiner on him again, the whole thing was set up for a freaking Pratt ball. So he would so he would break the come out of the harness and like or come out of the thing and like fall and trip and fall in his face. That's what oh, the whole freaking thing was set up for. It, it was so freaking needless. If he was in the, if he had the locked carabiner, it would have been it would have been fine. I just saw I just saw this thing last night when I was scrolling on social media. And it was like, you know, a, a fantasy match. And it was Daniel Bryan versus Owen Hart in a submission match. And I'm just thinking, like, Ooh. bro, that match would have been a fucking certified oh. banger. Damn. Damn. Wow. That would, been, that would have been a great match. Owen Hart did stuff back in the day. I mean, we're I don't I don't even care. Owen Hart did stuff back in the day, like when as the Blue Blazer, that people are doing now. I mean, the stuff that people are doing nowadays, like. The, mm -hmm. the you know the high spots. I mean, he was just such a natural. I mean, he was amazing. Yeah, absolutely amazing. After the after that whole Owen Hart incident, I feel like we're turning this into an Owen Hart episode. But who gives a shit? I don't. Give um, a shit. he deserves it. I believe. Hey, I'm talking believe about after, love, Owen Hart. Yup, yeah, yeah, pink, pink for I, Owen, baby. I believe. Um, and a, shortly, a, shortly, shortly after you know this, like Owen Hart was like he was planning on retiring. You know him yep. and his him what? and his wife him and his wife just bought a house or whatever they were renovating yep. like he was almost done he wanted yep. to make he died money Sunday to... and they were supposed to move in Wednesday mm. he paid five years they built that house for five years they were supposed to move in Wednesday Wednesday and he died Sunday night so sad never got to never got to and that, you know it's really it's kind of kind of cool in a way I get chill I get chills but his their the house was built from cherry wood and that's what she had his casket made from. I would I would love to be able to go there and you know put flowers on his grave sometime. My, it's definitely like a road trip idea. We were supposed mm, to definitely. go there. Me and a friend of mine were gonna go there a few years ago, and we ended up doing something else. But we were gonna that was a uh, that was a plan of our that was like a, that's definitely on my bucket list. 
for sure. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, after the whole Owen Hart situation, I believe that was like the last. Like, I don't think they allowed superstars to come to glide down like that after no. that whole. Nope, incident. no more. They they did not do that. <laughs> you know what's for reasons? Sting the night after, the night after, st- uh, they came uh to Sting. It was on Nitro, and they were like. So you're going to get ready to do your uh, repelling. And he's like, what? He's like, you know what happened to Owen Hart? And he's like, I'm not. He's like, I'm not doing that shit. He's like, that's that's done. <laughs> he's like, he's like, you're out of your mind. He's like, no, no more. He goes, that's in bad taste. But he talked to Brett about it. And Brett said, look, he goes, I'm cool with it. He goes, if it's for your character, he goes. And he talked to, he actually talked to the rest of the Hart family about it. And they were like. They were fine with it, and he got the blessing of the Hart family to do it, and it was, like, his choice. Like, he was pissed that they even asked him to do it. Like, it was such bad taste. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, there was there was things that they could have done to, you know, have the entrance still be affected without putting his life at risk. A hundred percent. But one more, now getting back into, you know, the love, you know angle here one final one i do want to talk about before you know i ask this last question to close off you know this week's episode of old school versus new school i remember one in the pg era i remember john cena and zach Ryder being best friends and zach Ryder had this big crush on eve torres and then he catches john cena making out with her <laughs> that was when zach Ryder, matt cardona was in a wheelchair right he was in the wheelchair yes. and stuff, and then Kane, you know, threw him off the stage. And this is when yeah. he was starting to get his big push until, you know, WWE had no idea what they were doing with him. I remember I remember one of them being in the big ring, surprise. and they they were, like, ta- they were like, cutting a promo about the whole situation. And then a video started playing of Eve Torres, like, you know, talking shit or, you know, pretty much yep. cheating or do- doing something or whatever. Yep, and, and, then at Wrestle, believe... and then at WrestleMania, it was like a Raw versus SmackDown thing, and then she, you know, kicked him right in the nuts. <laughs> yeah. Was, and then he made a music nuts. video called Hoski. That was nuts. That, that wasn't that memorable to me, though. Like, you know, I didn't I didn't really feel like it had that big of a payoff. You see, you you see why, you know, why it didn't? Because WWE wasn't, they weren't invested in Zack Ryder. No, they were that. invested in it. I mean, do we want to talk about the most, one of the most recent weddings? The uh, whole uh, the Reggie and Tamina and uh, whatever, whatever the fucking my my sentiments exactly, man. It's scripts <laughs> from NXT. We can talk about it. No, here's a good wedding that's like new school. Dexter Loomis and Indy Hartwell oh. on NXT. I think they did a fantastic job with that. Love me some angle. Dexter Loomis. That was great. They need to bring Indy Hartwell up to the main roster and put Indy Hartwell with Dexter Loomis. That'd be awesome. Because then, oh, awesome. awesome. what is Dexter yeah, Loomis doing? And yeah, Hartwell and Candice LeRae, they would be a good tag team for the women's division. I'm I'm pretty sure Indy Hartwell is the godmother of Candice and Johnny's. She team. is. You know they're like bad. They're like attached to the fucking hip. So the fact the fact I mean, that Indy, Indy Hartwell's on on NXT, but Dexter Loomis, Johnny, and Candice are on Raw doesn't make doesn't, sense. It it doesn't feel right to me. They should all be together. I gotta say, like, but that angle with Indy Hartwell and Dexter Loomis, that was such a beautiful story that was told. The wedding itself. Was that the first perfect. time that Dexter talked and the yep. first time people heard his voice on WWE TV and everybody was like, yeah. what the hell? You know, everybody was like, <laughs> crazy. But it was awesome because like it all like indicated in the storyline with the way. Which was at the time, you know, you had Candice LeRae, Indy Hartwell, Johnny Wrestling, and then you had Austin Theory. And yeah. Dexter Loomis, you know, they Johnny didn't trust Dexter to be a part of the way. And then eventually you see this relationship build. And that's like what made the story amazing. And that's when, you know, Dexter said yes. And the crowd went nuts. It was the perfect payoff. And yeah. I think, you know, even seeing them reunite when Dexter came back. And they did something on NXT. That was so cool to watch. Oh, yeah. Dex- Dexter gave her, like, the, the love letter or whatever. And then he gets arrested because, mm-hmm. you know, he kidnapped the Miz. And, you know, the police were after him. And it was nuts. We That's need Indy Hartwell to come to the main roster. It doesn't feel it doesn't feel right that she's on she's on NXT. But, yeah, you know. She's doing nothing. People who, people who are pretty yeah. much her family are on Monday Night Raw. It just doesn't make sense. Hopefully it happens soon. 
Hopefully after Mania with like the draft. Hopefully. I mean, but I'm sure know. we'll be talking about the whole Mania and draft thing on the We Are Wrestling talk show eventually. Every superstar was there. Were so many great superstars back then, and they focused on the show. What happened in the ring took care of itself. I have enjoyed tag team wrestling more now than I ever have in my entire life. And I okay. think a lot of it has to do with AEW, you know, tag team matches, especially the pay-per-views. Those crowds back then, fans were, wrestling fans were wrestling fans. With old school wrestling, the only thing I criticize is the pace of matches, I think. When it comes to old school, it's, for me, a little too slow. Characters, on the other hand, they're on a whole nother level. You can see your hands a little too close. Honestly, I would rather take the belt that I'm wearing on my pants. <laughs> I'd rather be representing that than the fucking <laughs> the new WWE <laughs> championship, okay? New episodes of Old School vs. New School air every Monday only on We Are Wrestling. But now, the last question I gotta ask before we close off this week's episode of Old School versus New School. Because, of course, you know how we always end it, Chaz. We talk about, you know, the differences between Old School and New School. So, what's the difference between Old School versus New School when it comes to love? What era d did it better? I don't know. I mean, I gotta say, this time, I mean, the Macho Man and Elizabeth thing was great, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm kind of, it's kind of like, I'm kind of stuck in between this time. I would have to I would have to go with like, you know, sort of like the early 90s and like, you know, late 90s, early 2000s or whatever. Just because like nothing was bigger than the Attitude Era. You were able to get away with more stuff like, you know, yeah. they had Braun Panty matches that, you know, there was just stuff they they that they fights, do. bikini contest. You know, I mean, Edge and Lita back in like 05 had like a live sex celebration. There was just things that, you know, more raunchy or adult oriented things that you were able to do that you can't do now. Yeah, I'd, I'd so have to, that automatically makes things better to me. You know? Yeah, I'd have to stick mm -hmm. it to, I'd have to give it to the new school on this one. For sure. Yeah, I definitely got to go new school. I think Ruthless Aggression, they really pushed the envelope when it came to, you know, the love stuff, especially Starting with, with attitude know, into the with yeah. Edge and Lita. And, of course, the Attitude Era, they pushed, you know, to the limits. They had sexual chocolate and May Young. <laughs> <laughs> they had, you know, Stephanie and Triple H, you know, power position. Bro, could you imagine if WWE tried to have a live sex celebration now? <laughs> <laughs> they get canceled. <laughs> but oh, overall, yeah. I feel like all of these love angles and, you know, wrestling weddings have really, you know, helped the business evolve because it gave us so much great storytelling and storylines. I it, feel like it, because it's I, more real life. I feel like there's one more that we have to mention. I feel like it was so huge back then that if we don't mention it, somebody's going to be, you know, bitching about it in the comments. <laughs> um. When Kane was dating that 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 woman that passed away, and Triple H was making it seem like he was having sex with a dead body. Oh, when the oh. when they were in the cast, when he was in the casket, when she was in the casket. Oh my god! I mean, that was yeah. We have to mention we had we couldn't end the episode without <laughs> mentioning that. Lita. Yeah, I was thinking about that, and I was like, <laughs> no, it was um. I can't remember her. I can't remember the woman's name. I know, like, Kane had an angle with X-Pac. Wasn't and, that like, Ryan Tory. Shamrock? Ryan Kane. Shamrock was married to Edge. Oh, there's one I want to mention, too, while you're looking that up. Katie Vick. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I got a quick one I definitely want to bring up. So. It was, well, you can technically call it love. Remember when Mickey James was, like, a super obsessed fan of Trish Stratus? Oh, yes. yeah, and, then, and then she got I'm, jealous of like Ashley and then like you had the WrestleMania feud with, you know, Mickey and Trish for the yes. women's title. Didn't um didn't Mickey James like put her fingers like in her in in her crotch or whatever and like sniff her fingers. Everybody went crazy over it. <laughs> yeah, she did. Well, let us know in the comment section below some of your favorite love angles in professional wrestling. If you enjoyed this week's episode of Old School versus New School Love Edition, make sure to smash that like button now. If you're not a We Are Wrestling Maniac yet already, subscribe, turn on the post notifications. 
The links are down in the description below. You can go follow all of us on our social medias and other YouTube pages. All that down below. But of course, to all that we are wrestling maniacs out there worldwide, we are taking over. Peace.